as a student, Box here, I think, represented kind of the school spirit of the of the campus. And it was a you know a curious background. He sat on a little pedestal in the chapel, which was in Marsh Hall. Everybody thought it belonged there because it had been brought back as a missionary came back. But then somebody started swiping it and it became a thing to do, was to swipe it, hide it for a while, and then flash it, as they called, so somebody else could swipe it and hide it for a while. Flash meant was, I've had it in secret, but I'm about to tease you with it now, so I'm gonna flash it and run like mad. I was a member of the student council, and I was making these mundane announcements, and I noticed that everybody all started to rise and started to come up toward the stage, where, and I thought, nothing I said would cause this to happen. I'm boring stuff. But I turned around, there was a guy behind me holding boxer above my head, so I was in the middle of a boxer flash, and I was about to be run over by this crowd going, and I just got out of the way, and he, whooshed out of the auditorium in the back and they chased him and, and uh, so that's an example of a flash. The experience primarily that I had with Boxer was when I was a senior and, and president of the fraternity, I was the one who rode with Boxer in the trunk of a car from a car dealership in Hillsboro through Cornelius and into Forest Grove holding the lid of the trunk shut. I felt every bump between here and Hillsboro. As they drove onto campus, people said, don't they understand that the boxer is gonna be thrown out today? And don't they understand that their car could end up being in trouble if they are in the midst of this, this melee, this riot? So they backed the car up and started to turn it around and that's when I threw open the trunk and jumped out and tossed the boxer to my left and immediately ran to my right because I was at the time sick and tired of the dog and knew that there were gonna be a number of people, uh, a number, yeah, a great number of people running after the dog and I didn't wanna be underneath that pile of humanity. And right in the site of where the new library is today is really was the, the grounds of which the, the, the toss or the, the fight uh, took place. And as the, the day went on, it was a couple hours of free-for-all. The boxer was pretty good size, a lot of sharp edges to it, and so there were cuts and bruises and things. But there were probably a thousand people in the midst of all this thing watching. watching. And, and in the middle of trying to get possession of it. G groups would gather in, and go in, in in phases and in waves to try and get possession of it. It's, it's almost like a rugby scrum where you get organized and you go in and, and uh, attack a position. And then some groups would fall back and others would come in and you couldn't, you couldn't hit anybody, but everything else was pretty much fair game. It was pretty intense. But and the big pile just kind of moved all around. You could just kind of see it, you know. Yeah. Whoever was pushing it, it would go different directions. It started a little bit after 8.30, 8.39 in the morning, something along those lines. I think they, finally they got it into the car and got it out of campus, out of town, uh, around 3 or 4 o'clock. They took off to go to the Oregon coast with it to get away from everybody, and they were being tailed by a member by a car full of fraternity brothers from another fraternity, the third one on campus. We were in a vigorous pursuit of the car because there was no one else behind us. And there was one driver in the car that had the dog and his engine blew up. So he's sitting there and the car comes up with all the other uh, gentlemen and they got out of the car and very politely asked for the dog. The four of us convinced him it would be in his best interest to let us have the boxer because we were going to take it one way or another. So it was four of us against one of him so I, I, he used good judgment in that. We held possession of it for well over a year. Now we showed it off a lot. You've got pictures of some of our fraternity brothers with, with Richard Nixon in the library and I, we thought that was pretty impressive. It was well attended by his security team and everything, but we didn't announce that we were leaving and going to do that. That was done secretly. Longevity 
card didn't work out so well for Boxer 1, or for that matter, for Boxer 2, but we have great hopes for Boxer 3. Um, and we hope that it will have the most meaning for our current and future students, and that it will symbolize the, the welcoming and nurturing environment at Pacific that we strive to provide all of our students. I think we need to show it to them. Uh, Don't yeah. 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 My time has come and gone here at Pacific. Uh, I enjoy the relationship that I have with uh, my fellow alums when we come back for homecoming and, and so on and so forth. I would much rather have the students at Pacific that are students now develop their history and their memories, but it, there's, a, there's a corner of me that occasionally I, I, I pull out and take a look at and say, it, it, it was fun. Um, but it was fun while it lasted. <laughs>